Go ahead and take your seat. Say amen to that. You know, there's people here maybe watching us that you feel like you've done it all, you've seen it all, been there, done that, seen this, seen that. But apparently, you still dry up, you're still discouraged, you're still dead. So your seen it all, done it all, didn't get you anywhere. Because if you really seen it all and done it all, man, you'll be up there shaking the world like Alexander Dawi did in the 1800s by himself, shook the whole nation of America from the president to the bars and changed the entire city of Illinois, Chicago, Illinois, and founded its own city called Zion, Illinois, which still exists. That man seen it all and done it all. That man shook an entire nation by himself. By himself. In 10 years. By himself. When you get to that place, you've seen it all, done it all. <laughs> but if you say, I've seen it all, I've done it all, been there, done that, uh, uh, you are operating in the minus, not on the pluses. You know what I mean by that? There's zero, and everything above zero is plus. You are below zero, so you've seen it all in that level, but you still got nothing. But if a person like Alexander Dawi could change the whole nation. The whole nation. Not a city. The whole nation. By himself. In the 1800s. When it was tough and rough, people would hang you if they didn't like it. You said, well, that was back in the boonie days. Well, Amy Semple McPherson shook the whole America when women were forbidden to speak publicly. She came up and says, well, guess what? I'm going to. I have, was the first person to preach the gospel on radio and television. It was Amy Selva, my first one. Forget about TVN. It was her. Shook the whole nation by herself. A divorced woman. So you have no excuses. With two little children. And no babysitter. So you have no excuses. Shook the whole nation. All of Hollywood was shaken by her. All the movie stars will come and see her to get prayer. All the famous ones, not the little nobodies that try to be movie stars. I'm talking about the A-list hitters. Charlie Chaplin was one of his members on the front row. Most of his plays that he got, he learned him because she was the first one to incorporate preaching with theatrical plays. And he will go and take notes and go do movies that you watch. And many more famous people of that day came out of her church. They will come up to see, Hollywood will come up to see what play she's going to have on Sunday so we can make a movie out of it. Go read it. It's in your history. Woman by herself on her 40s with two little kids. Shook America. Built in 1929 during that depression. He built Angelo's Temple that seats 5,000 people. When nobody, when America was broke, the, during that depression, she built it cash free. I mean, paid it with cash, debt free, I should say. Built it by herself. Built a Bible school, a radio station with a big tower that still stands. In fact, she had more money than the whole state of California, and she'll feed more homeless and left behind people than the whole state of California during that depression. Lines and lines of people will line up out of the door of her church. Go read it. It's in the books. Go to the archives of the LA Times. You will see it. You don't have to go to the Christian books. Go to the archives online. Pay $25 to become a member. And you can put every, every front page of the LA, uh, you know, LA Times from ever till now. And you will see front pages. Amy. Sister Amy doing this. Sister Amy doing this. By herself. The husband left her. Because her husband goes, ah, I don't want to live this kind of life. It's me or your God. She goes, goodbye, buddy, my God. She had no excuses. Shook the whole world. A 17-year-old Catherine Kuhlman sat on the balcony of her Bible school and heard Amy Semple, my first one, preach, and she cut that thing and became Catherine Kuhlman. Don't think Catherine Kuhlman became just like that. Go read it. So if these people could do all that, Why? Because they saw it all and they did it all. <laughs> so don't give me that talk like seen it all, done it all, been there, done that. Mm. That's just your front 
because you don't want to face the fact that you're dying on the inside so it's easier to say I've been there nothing moves me I don't go to church because I seen it all it's a lie because if you seen it all you'll be having church yourself in fact when people says I seen it all they're lying because the Bible says we see in part through a dark glass so if you saw it all man you're special so guess what you're not special so you're lying and if you've done it all, you, you should have done what Catherine Kuhlman did, what Amy did, what Alexander Dowie did. And you haven't done not even 0.1% of what they have done, so you have not done it all. What am I telling you this? Simply, because you have done it all in your minus level. So you reach the cap. And you think that's all there is. But God says you're minus 100. You haven't even reached zero yet. So you can start going up. When you realize that, it makes you feel so insignificant and it makes you feel, God, then, then my goodness, what do I do with my life? And you come to one conclusion. You can do absolutely nothing except let God do it. That's when the fun begins. You see, when people tell me I've done it all, I also say this. You're right. You, you have done it all. And your all is nothing. <laughs> your all is nothing. But when you really see what potential you can do in God there is a desperation on the inside of you because you realize I cannot do that how can I do what Amy said by first and did by herself not only that a divorced woman twice divorced not only once twice so you have no excuse twice divorced back in the 20s when divorce was like just bad woman that could not even vote she found her own denomination that still has 1500 churches around the world the four square gospel how many of you heard of the four square gospel churches know why four square because she got a revelation of Jesus the healer the savior the soon coming king and the baptizer with the Holy Ghost when she saw that in the Bible she goes every church lacks this they preach this and they don't believe on this they preach that they don't believe he goes some church needs to believe in everything so God says why don't you make it happen she founded the denomination with all four revelations you know Christ the healer the savior the baptizer with the Holy Ghost and the soon coming king that's she died 70 years ago, brother. The church still going on. That denomination, not the church. A woman. Nothing against a woman, but I'm just to, to tell you that. What, what is your excuse? Well, my wife, my husband, she had two kids and no babysitter. And there was no internet. There was no, not many planes. She had to drive her little car. You can see on the photos across the nation. Driving with her kids on the back. You see photos of luggage on top of the car. And the kids hanging off the windows just sitting in there through two three weeks to go from la to california to pre uh, from la to new york to preach on back around the state by herself there was no building that wanted her so she got her own tent and guess what there was very few men that wanted to help to put up the tents because they didn't believe in women preachers so she says guess what you don't want to help me i'm gonna be, i'm gonna put up the tent myself she'll be putting the tent up herself she had to leave half an hour before to go shower for service. What is your excuse? Nobody's sending me. Nobody's helping me. Nobody's help. Nobody. Man, she did it. Nobody helps me. She did it herself. One time, she was putting the heater for the people and the, the, the what do you call those uh, gas little tanks, you know? Propane gas exploded on her face, burned her dress, and burned her entire face. It's on her book. The woman was burned, brother. You know what most of you would have done? Run to the hospital. And she goes, I don't think so. I have a crusade to preach in one hour. And she said, God, I mean, she was in pain. He goes, God, I'm going to go up. And the same old power of the Holy Ghost that's come on me night after night is going to make me whole. When she stood up in the pulpit, the face was completely healed. The pink turned back to white. Kevin, you know that's to be true. So what is your excuse? I don't have money. Nobody wants to help me. Nobody loves me. I got divorced twice, you don't understand. I have kids. We call it Christian baloney. Let me be a little raw, Christian BS. 
I don't have money. You don't need money to preach. You don't need money to preach. If you think you need money to preach, you've been around the wrong mafia. You can go preach free. All you need is to have the Holy Ghost. You don't even need a Bible to preach. The disciples had no Bible when they stood up to preach. When Peter stood up to preach in, in, the, in an upper floor, he didn't go, well, uh, 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 guys, let me have my Bible because I got to preach. And the Holy Ghost said, everybody turn to Matthew 15, 12. No, he just got up better. He stood up and suddenly, think about it. They were sitting down, everybody hanging, and suddenly the Holy Ghost came on him. Oh, hey, everybody. These people are not drunk like you think they're drunk. But this is that which was spoken. He was preaching without a Bible. And 3,000 souls were saved. So don't tell me you need a Bible. Don't tell me you need an education. Don't tell me you need Bible school. Don't tell me you need money. Don't tell me you need a crowd. All you need is the Holy Ghost to kick you on the rear end and you get up and go, hey, everybody. God says this and that. Oh. So don't let religion and denominations tell you what kind of version do you have in your Bible. Is it King James or is this one? What Bible degree do you have? Who's your mentor? Who's your covering? What school did you go to? Who's backing you up? Do you got money? Ba ba ba. <laughs> Peter just stood up. Peter felt fire burn on his soul. And he jumped up together with the 12. Means the 12 jumped up too, but Peter was the first one to open his mouth. And he said, this is that. And the Holy Ghost came on him and 3,000 get saved. Hello? So they seen it and they done it all. And there's record that they changed the world. So you have no excuses. In reality, you have no excuses. Especially you, you that believe that God has called you. Half of you that believe that God has called you is just your imagination because you have no life. So you're trying to get escape with God. Get a life, get an education, get a real job. Don't think that preaching the gospel is an escape of a lazy life. It's not. Because that's what happened in America. There's a lot of people preaching the gospel because they think that preaching, it's, I don't have to work, so I make easy money. And that's why we have so many churches that are dead and messed up and confused. You need a call from God. And when God calls you, He anoints you. And when he calls you and anoints you, he backs you up in the face of persecution. So if you're waiting for your call to happen, let me tell you something. You are not called because it would have happened unless God is in the process of doing something. I just had to say that to deflate because everybody thinks they're called. No. Not everybody's called. God is not going to back up everybody. He doesn't need a crowd. He needs the few. It's like the army. He's look, looking for the few good men but a few good women good for what the good ones that are going to lay down their life for him not the ones that know it all not the ones that have the backing the money and my dad is this famous no no he says i want few good men that are willing to lay down their lives for the cause of the gospel when god finds those men he will do anything but if you think that you that you can preach the gospel so you can live and make good money and travel the world like you see preachers that they do it no you know why they do that because they're doing something significant for god People criticize, why do they have, why Copeland has to have a plane? Why they have to have this? Because they need it because they're doing something you're not doing. Because if they didn't need it, they wouldn't have the money to buy a plane. But a lot of people think that the call of God is escape from a life of being a loser. Well, I don't have nothing to do. I don't have education. Well, let me go preach because... It's easy money. Preachers live out of the people's offerings. Man, if that'll be the case, I'd be a very wealthy man right now. But there's a problem. There's an agency in the government called the IRS that they can put you in jail, such as they put many preachers that we know, because they did not report $10,000, and they put the rear ends in jail. If you think you can cheat the IRS, good luck. Try it. So all those people that say, you know, preachers are living out of the widows, $10 and all friends, they living it up. Dude, maybe in South America we can do that, but not in America. And in South America you cannot because the offerings suck. That's a fact. 
So it's not escape. The gospel is not escape because you have no life. So you make yourself believe that God called me. Oh, God called me, so I'm called to preach. No. Because when God calls you, He anoints you, He appoints you, and He's the one that, like a slingshot, sends you out. It's like that. That's what happened with me. You know how I know I was called? Not because somebody told me you're called. In fact, when a prophet begins to prophesy, Yea, son, the Lord will say unto thee, Indeed, you are my chosen. And he goes, shut up. Tell me something I don't know. How many of you got those prophecies? You know, you have a collection of it. Yea, indeed, my son, the Lord will say unto thee, Yea, you are chosen. It's like, that's not a prophecy. That's you just talking out of your mouth. <laughs> that's where they're talking from. You know how I know I'm called? Because this is not what I want to be doing. I want to be in Hawaii, and I told you this a million times. I was minding my own business. I was happy on my island. I was happy doing what I was doing. And the Lord, without asking me permission, came to me and knocked me on the ground and took me to heaven and commissioned me to preach the gospel or I will die. And I said, God, I don't want to do it because people don't like me and people say this and that. And the Lord stripped me from everything and put me back and says, go ye in my name. And I had nothing else to do but go because everything else I tried failed until I went. I have friends. I lost them all. I had relationships. They walked away. I had a business. It went away. And I was miserable until I obeyed. And when I went, I found myself doing this. That's how I know I'm called. Because people say, like, well, I don't think you're called. I go, is that from God? If it is, man, I'm out of here. Hallelujah. I'm going back to Hawaii, open a business and live on the beach, brother. I'm telling you, God knows. I tell them, I say, God, if, 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 when you're done with me, if I'm still alive, I'm going back to Hawaii. But God has me here. And you could say, is God forcing you? No, God is not forcing me, but God gave me no way out. Because God told me, or you preach or you die. Uh, I don't think I want to die. <laughs> not yet, brother. <laughs> you know, I want to preach. So I show up anywhere in the world, and I get up, and God does it. You've seen it, night after night. I don't have to pump it up. The Holy Spirit moves. The power of God flows, and He gives me words to speak. I don't even know what I'm going to say. I know the Word, and I spend time in the Word. I listen to my Bible, and I read my Word. But when I'm here, I say, God, you brought me here, so you speak to your people. It's your people. I'm going to become an oracle of, your, of you. And He comes over, and I open my mouth like the Bible says. You open your mouth, He'll fill it. That's exactly what I do. And then I say, God, I don't know who's sick. I don't know. They all look like nice, normal people. And suddenly, the power of God comes on me, and I change into something that is just like, you know, like... He just changed, Brandon. It's like Clark Kent to Superman, you know? And suddenly, now that I saw you as nice people, I see what I see, lay my hands on you, or do this. And you're down on the ground, and you get healed and delivered. And then I'm done. That's how I know I'm called. So if you're called, there will be something in there that has nothing to do because you have no life. So I might as well get an education and get a life. I don't know what I'm saying. This Maybe somebody needs to hear that. Because hey, people all over the world, everybody's called. Everybody's called. Man, with so many called people, the whole world be shaken up. But it's not. You know, I mean, people are going to hell left and right. What happened to all the millions that are called? <laughs> because they're not. They call themselves. Let me tell you what's one of the signs of somebody who's called with God. I'm not going to say this because most people won't tell you this. But this is what the scripture says. Most people that are called of God, if not everyone that is called of God, number one requirement is you must have a direct encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't mean through a preacher. I don't mean, oh yeah, I read the Bible and I got something. No, I mean literally there is one-on-one -on -one encounter with Jesus. Peter had it. What do you want? Throw the nets. Come on, man. I'm fishing all night long. You don't know. Go, go, go back and teach to your people. Peter, go deep and cast the net. Fish came up. What did the Bible says? That Peter fell back on his boat seat and he go, 
He goes, God, get away from me. I'm a sinner. I said, get away from me. I'm a sinner. And the Lord says, relax, Peter. From this day on, you become fishers of men. There was an encounter there. He didn't have to assume. Did he call me? I don't know. Sister Baba didn't come and goes, ba -da -da -ba -da 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 -da. yay, son. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Yay, son. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, you're called. Ooh. No, she, he didn't need that. He had an encounter with him. And the Lord himself called him. That's a requirement for the people that are called. If that hasn't happened to you, I doubt you're calling. I'm just being honest. Well, prophet, prophesy. That's okay. That's a men talking. Most of them prophets don't know what to prophesy. So they say, oh, yeah, you're called. They don't know. They're just putting that on you. Then here is Bartolome. Come over to a tree and his friend Andrew comes running and says, hey, we found the Messiah. <laughs> Come on. Where is he from? He's from such and such place. Come on. Can any good thing come out of that place? Dude? Come on. What do you mean he's from Pine Hills? What's from Pine Hills, man? Come on. What do you get in this trouble? I mean, you know, tell me he's from Windermere or tell me he's from Melbourne. But not from, come on. And he goes, well, come and see. He comes and <laughs> All arrogant, I bet. And he goes like, this is the man. <laughs> and Jesus said, hey, before Andrew called you, I saw you. Goes, what do you mean you saw me? When you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Whew, power of God came on him because he spent time on that tree doing his vows to God by himself. And here comes Jesus that only God could have heard his vows and tells them. And that encounter caused him to say, you are the son of God. And he says, because I tell you I saw you, now you believe. I said, from this time on, you will see heaven open. And the angels ascending and descending. Man, how did he get his call? Why did he die for Jesus? Because he had an encounter face to face. And the Lord himself says, now follow me. That's a call. Matthew. Man, he was working for the IRS, brother. He was a crook. Like, I'm not going to say nothing, but like some people. Bless you, IRS. Taking people's money, you need, you, you need to pay extra for this. What about, you need more? And Jesus comes over and says, Matthew. He goes, get on the line, get on the line. I'm busy. Get on the line, come on. Matthew. And suddenly the eyes of the Lord come on him. And he says, follow me. What do you think it costs a man just to let go of everything? Because there was a supernatural awareness that he was in the presence of somebody who was divine. Because you don't leave your IRS job just to follow some pastor that wants you to be an usher in the church. And he let go of everything and follow him. And Matthew became Matthew. And you can go through the scriptures to everyone that was truly called. And there was an encounter they had face to face with the Lord Jesus Christ. Abraham, the father of the faith. Father Abraham. He walked with an invisible God. He believed God, never seen God. He was a good, righteous man, walked by the word, walked by, the, by his convictions. But one day, two angels come in, the Bible says, and when they come in, he sees them, runs to them, and says, Oh God, come to my house, let's kill the best whatever they had. They cook it for them. They're sitting there and then they said, by this time next year, your wife Sarah will have a child. And Sarah that was in the kitchen doing her stuff, he goes, ha! And the Lord went like, hey, why did you laugh? Uh, I didn't laugh. He says, Abraham. I said, you will be a father of men. You know why Abraham became Abraham? Because the invisible God that he knew was there came to visit and had a face-to-face -face encounter that made him the patriarch and the father of our faith. Don't think they just became father of faith because he was religious. So if you call of God, where was your encounter? Well, well uh, Rodney Howard Brown prayed for me and I fell on the ground and I laughed for 45 minutes. That's not your encounter. Dude, I can kick you and knock you down and you will cry for 45 minutes. That's not an encounter. That's a touch. An encounter 
It will be so real that you'll remember the day, the time, the hour, and everything else like it happened to you in the hospital when you were dying, brother. This man was dying with a sickness, and he was in the point of going to the other world, and the Lord himself walked in the room and healed him from TB and got it out. And this man now is ministering the gospel because he had an encounter face to face with the living God. That's Kevin right there. He will remember the day, the place, and exactly how it happened. I remember mine. I talk about it all the time. So if you think your call of God, when was your encounter that changed everything? I'm not talking about the day you got saved. If there wasn't, then be occupied. Go get a job. Go get a life. You know, do something productive. And if God comes and visits you, great. But if He doesn't, don't wait around. Go, I'm just waiting. Hopefully one day. No, get a life. Do something. Go get married. Go, go work. Go study. If God calls you, you can quit it. But if He doesn't, you're doing something productive. I see so many people sitting aside waiting for God to come in and fulfill the call. And they're just waiting, living on, 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 on stamps and the government going, well, I'm just waiting for the time. I'm just waiting. Wait. You're waiting for nothing. You're lazy. Go and do something. Something with your life. Let the call of God interrupt your life. You don't interrupt your life waiting for the call. Because the call comes to you, you don't go to it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You see, I feel like talking like this today because I, I, you, you know I have never said this before. But there are people here and people watching us. And you need to hear this because maybe you're one of those people that you think because you pray in tongues. And one time you led three people to the Lord that now you are called. No, everybody here should be leading people to the Lord because the Lord wants His people to lead others to Him. Don't think because you cast a devil out and now you have a deliverance ministry. Because the Lord says, for them that believe in my name, you will cast out devils. So everybody in this place should be casting out devils. If you're not casting out devils, you're not a believer. So not the other way around. I cast out devils. Oh, I'm somebody special. No, if you cast out a devil, you're a normal Christian. Let me go a step farther. The Lord says, in my name, those that believe, they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So if you never pray for somebody and they got healed, you're not a believer. Because if you're a believer, you should be laying hands on people and the Lord says they shall recover because that's the call of the believer. So if you pray for grandma and she came out of the bed of affliction, that don't make you a person that's called to have a healing ministry. It makes you a normal believer. But we exaggerate it because like, oh man, I, I pray for uh, Sue uh, and she got healed from the leg problem. So now I have my own ministry. I'm going to the ministry. No, you're not. You're just being a Christian. Are you understanding what I'm saying? What is God telling you today? Very simple as I close this little thing that I'm saying. Be a real Christian. Be a real Christian. What's a real Christian? One that believes God. One that seeks Him. And one that does what God says you're supposed to do. What am I supposed to do, Brother Rich? Go to Bible school? No. He says... Be occupied till I come. In other words, have a life. Be productive. Number two, as a believer in my name, go fish people out of the pond of the world and bring them into the table of God. And if any of them are sick, lay your hands and get him healed. If any of them are bound to a demon, cast them out. God even goes farther and says this. If any of them die, raise him up. <laughs> Why? So that you can become a witness like God called you to be. Say after me, God's called me to be a witness. God's called me to win souls for Him. As I go out and I step in faith, His power to heal and to deliver will flow through my life. That's your call. Any, any sincere preacher that preaches the word will tell you that. Now, some preachers will, will, won't tell you this because, you know, they want to keep you tied up. So they go, well, you, you need me. And I do it. You just follow me. No. You have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Can you?
you say amen to that?